Where to start? Another week and another bank failure. Another week and, well, no relief in inventory levels. Actually, it's really gotten worse. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do an interest rate update as well as talk about the First Republic Bank and what that bank collapse actually means for the real estate market. And for the luxury home of the week, well, we're headed into the Seaport District. Take a look at a stunning condo at the St. Regis. Now, the sellers, they're asking $3,824 a square foot. I mean, just mind-blowing. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than 1,000 houses. If you have any questions about the real estate market, then no, I'm here to help. So some very quick housekeeping. As you know, I record these videos every Tuesday and release them on Wednesday. But I just wanted to give you the heads up of the possibility of missing one in the coming weeks. My wife and I, well, we're expecting our third baby girl in the coming weeks, and it might not exactly cooperate with video shooting. But now let's talk about some real estate. Another week of multiple offer situations. And as the weekend came to a close, I was kind of thinking it felt a little slower. And so was one of my clients. They saw a house that they liked and figured, what the heck? They liked it, didn't necessarily love it, but still bid $40,000 or 5.6% over asking price and ended up not even being close. Seven offers and we were well close to the bottom. But here's what I took away from this. The offer that won, they actually removed their mortgage contingency. This is insane. Unless you have the money sitting in an account or a parent maybe that's willing to loan you the money, you should never be removing a mortgage contingency. If your agent is recommending you to do this, then you should be finding a new agent. They care about their next commission check more than your exposure, as well as the risk of you losing possibly tens of thousands of dollars. It's a tough market out there for us real estate agents. Sales, well, they're way down, with there still being a lot more agents in the market to service that number of reduced sales. Buyer and seller, beware of the starving agent that will do and say anything because they need that next commission check. And really quick, be on the lookout for the main market report, which will be hitting YouTube on Saturday. Some crazy things are going on. You're just not going to want to miss it. But now let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,362 houses currently on the market. Now inventory grew. Yeah, hey, hey, but the gap between the amount of inventory on the market today versus today last year is actually down to 114 units. Last week, I'd asked if it was possible that we were going to see a drop below the record low amount of inventory levels that we saw in 2022, and it looks like that we're about to do it. The absolute record low was this week of May in 2021, when there were 3,088 units on the market, so 114 units away from the second lowest inventory time in history, and 274 units away from the lowest amount of inventory in history. Now, these inventory levels are not loosening up anytime soon, and I thought we'd get some relief going into the spring market, but it's turning out that I was well wrong. We had a strong week for new listings as 1,206 properties came on the market this week. Now, this was a great number, and to put in perspective what we've seen in the last couple of weeks, the four-week rolling average was 932 units. So this is a great number when compared to this year, but we were still 450 units off of the 1,656 listings that came on the market this week last year. That's a 27% decrease in the amount of new listings year over year. But here's some good news if you're a buyer. The last time there were more houses listed was back during the week of July 25th in 2022. Now, another strong week for under agreements, they came in at 1,003. Now, it's a little under last week's 1,031, but a decent showing is the four-week rolling average is 918 units. Well, compared to the same week in 2022, under agreements were off by 26.4% when 1,364 houses sold. So inventory was down by 27%, and under agreements were down by 26%. So for argument's sake, both well, under agreements and new listings are down about the same from last year. Now, this means that, yes, you have less sales than last year, but this is why you still have the crazy, insane market conditions that we saw last year. Both went down about the same. Now, there were 873 homes that closed this week for an average sales price of $785,000 and a median sales price of $600,000. And then a month of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months, being considered a seller's market. With the closer you can get to zero, the stronger seller's market it is. Now, this week, months of inventory jumped to 1.89 months compared to last week's 1.74 months. It continues to indicate that it is a strong seller's market. Real quick, shameless plug, I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help. Because like I said earlier, I have a third baby on the way. Now, under the condo market, we have 2,155 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, inventory dropped by 27 units. We now have only 
6.4% more condos on the market today than we did 28 days ago. It's springtime. We should have a bunch more inventory on the market right now. Like the single family market, the inventory gap between this year and last year shrunk to 117 units and from last week's 248 units. So the condo market only has 117 more units than last year, while the single family market only has 114 more units than last year. I mean, just crazy. There were 509 condos that came on the market this week. Now, this was a little bit of a pullback from the previous two weeks, but still higher than the four-week rolling average of 493 units. We were still 28% behind last year's numbers when 707 condos came on the market. We had 516 condos go under agreement this week, off slightly from last week when 508 went under agreement, but the four-week rolling average was 431 condos. So that 516 is a pretty great number compared. Now, however, when you compare it to the same week last year, we were actually down by 16.6% when 619 condos went under agreement. While there's balance in the single-family market with the new listings as well as the under agreements going down by essentially the same amount, the condo market, well, they don't have that. There's about 17% less buyer demand while seller supply is down by 28%. This is something that you want to keep your eye out on for the next couple weeks. Is it just an outlier or is it going to become a trend? Please be an outlier. There were 417 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $734,000 and that median sales price of $570,000. Now, lots of inventory went down slightly to 2.44 months from last week's 2.45 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods. And well, subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So another bank fail and a pretty big one with some local ties. So the real estate market, it's screwed, right? Well, not exactly, and kind of yes. The commercial real estate market is the one that got hurt by another big regional player going under. As we've talked about before, it's the regional banks that do the majority of loans to the commercial market. So another large player collapsing does not necessarily spell good things for this market, as that means there are a lot more regional players out there that are well, under financial stress. If the Fed keeps increasing interest rates, then be prepared. There will be more banks that fail. In regards to the residential market, eh. The liquidity of the residential market is actually backed by the U.S. government through the government-sponsored enterprise of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Now, banks, they can keep going under, and this liquidity to the market, it's still going to be there. Do they serve the entire market? No, but based off of 2020 data, they represent close to 78% of the residential mortgage market. Now, First Republic had such a resounding effect on the mortgage market that rates, well, they climbed by 15 basis points on Monday, only to give those gains back on Tuesday. This bank closure will not affect the residential real estate market. Again, it does, however, continue to demonstrate that the commercial real estate market is, well, screwed. Next week, we have the consumer price index, so that will most likely be a market mover. But for now, focus on the job market. And check this article out. Labor market in freefall as job opening slide quits double to two-year low. Now, a little cool quote action here. With consensus expecting only a modest drop in March job openings after the February collapse and sharp downward January revision, what the BLS reported instead was yet another doozy for the third month in a row. In March, there were just 9.59 million job openings, the lowest since April 2022, and a drop of 384,000 from the upward revised February print. Combined with the sharp drops in January and February, the combined three-month drop in job openings was the second biggest on record. I know the consensus is that Fed is going to increase their rates by 25 basis points. But I really hope that another bank failing and the job market crashing is enough for them to take a breather. The economy, it's fragile. Systematic inflation, it's hard to stamp out. We saw it in the 1970s, and inflation dipped down to only go right back up. And a lot harder, by the way. I talked about it in my video that I did that goes over if now is really the most expensive time to buy a house. You should check it out if you haven't, because, well, there's a lot of really great information there. And now into the luxury home of the week, which is a condo located in the Seaport District at 150 Seaport Boulevard and it's Unit 17E. Now, quick side note, have you been to the Seaport recently? I mean, I swear, each time I'm there, it's changed with more new builds. I'm not that old, but I do remember when it was just all parking lots, which was actually rather recently. Now, this condo is located on the 17th floor of this new building. It's a three-bedroom, a three-full, and one-half-bath home that spans 2,497 square feet. It's got perfect unit placement in the building with the floor-to-ceiling windows to match. Now, the unit offers unparalleled views of the airport, the harbor, and out to the Harbor Islands. This is considered one of the most premier units in the most premier buildings of Boston. Now, the unit sports an open layout with a kitchen that flows into the large living room and dining area. The kitchen sports Wolf and Sub-Zero appliances, Italian wood cabinets, and marble 
countertops with the waterfall edge. This is a 31-foot outdoor balcony off the living room, making the views even better and more enjoyable. All the accents and fit and finish is top-end with stunning bathrooms, especially that master. Wow. The unit comes with two valet parking spots and enjoys all the features that the St. Regis has to offer. This building is known as one of the most premier for a reason with its swimming pool, fitness center, sauna, club room, and concierge. But if you like those things, then, well, you're going to pay for it. And the condo fee is $4,711 per month. Now, this unbelievable home is being marketed with an asking price of $9,550,000. When I talk about your own personal real estate needs, I do the luxury house a week just for fun. But my specialty here and my love, quite frankly, is helping the normal guy, not the gal buying the $10 million condo. And when it comes to helping people sell, well, my goal is to provide that same service that the $10 million mansion folks get, but for us non $100,000 plus year property tax payers. Every person's home, well, it's their castle, and they deserve to be treated that way. All my information, it's in the description below. You can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill out a couple uh, answers, you know, basically your name and your phone number, and then I'm going to reach out for you. It all comes down to whatever is easiest for you. I love to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you. It just talk to you about your real estate goals and how we can maybe help accomplish them. Questions or comments about any or all this market data, drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so well, I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.